Hello, welcome to another episode of Mar Onboarding. My name is Josh and I'm one of the application scientists here at Nano. Today, I'm going to be showing you the power of utilizing Mara in conjunction with Nano. So first off, we're going to start within Mara. I'm going to do some molecular dynamics. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load in my files. I've got two types, my PDB file and my XTC. So let's load them in like so. So my PDB file is my topology file and my XTC file is my compressed trajectory containing the atomic coordinates, the box vectors and the time information as well. So the first thing I'm going to ask from Mara is to just give me some basic information regarding this. So I'm going to ask Mara, uh, how long does this simulation take? So I'm going to let this run and we're going to see Mara think and execute its plan. And this is going to take a couple of minutes to run as there is a lot of information for Mara to go through. So we're drawing back when that has happened. As you can see, Mara is executing his plan. There we are. As you can see, it's finished computing. Now let's go find out the information. So if we come here, we can see our inputs, our trajectory and topology files, and we can also now see our outputs as well. So the length of the entire trajectory is 110 frames. Each time step is one picosecond, and the entire simulation takes one nanosecond altogether. But let's move on with our analysis. The next thing I'm going to ask Mara to do is to calculate the protein backbone root mean square deviation from the trajectory. And what this is going to do, this is going to tell us how far apart the protein backbone is throughout this simulation. So now we can see in real time this time that Mara is planning and it's going to execute that plan using the tool calculate RMSD from trajectory. And here we are, it's done it like so. We can see the distance apart in ang angstrom as the simulation time increases. So let's close this down for a second and let's look in here. So here we can see how the tool works. We can see our inputs, we can see our reference frame, and we can also see our selection. So our selection will tell us, will tell the tool, which will then tell Mara what part we want to calculate. So we could calculate for the whole protein, or we could calculate just for the backbone, like we have done here. And then you can see it will create a temporary cache using MATLAB and you want to do its calculations. Now, the next thing I want to do is calculate an MD trajectory, but with a different ligand. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to ask Mara to now calculate with the ligand called MOL. Now, this is a ligand that is already in our PDB file, so it's ready to go. It's not one we've just drawn from from thin air. And again, Mara is going to come up with this plan. So let's see what it comes up with. So it's going to convert the MD trajectory to PDB from MOL, and then it's going to calculate the RMSD. So the same two steps we've done previously, it's going to now do together. So we're going to let that compute and we'll join back. So this is finished calculating. And now let's take a look at what it's done. We can see our RMSD plot for this new ligand MOL and also our PDP file as well. So to do this, it, use our input files again, our reference frame is still a zero, and also our selection this time was set to MOL. And then it took the same steps as before to run this calculation. Now, there is one more thing I'd like to do before we head into XR, um, and that is to calculate the distance between two specific atoms. And this is something we can highlight very well in, in XR as well. So to do that, I'm going to ask Mara, calculate, the distance between, and I'm going to choose two atoms, HZ1 in this residue, which is in our binding pocket, and this other residue, which is in our ligand. And we're going to let this run as well. And we'll see the plan that Mara comes up with, and then we'll cut to when it's finished calculating. So this is finished its calculation. So let's look at what it's done. So we've run two tools this time. The first one is get residue names and serials per chain from a PDB or SIF file. So what this has done, let's take a look. It's inputted our PDB file and it's outputted this, which is a JSON file. And this shows us all of the different amino acids in our sequence. 
So we can find Rs146, like so, and lysine. Now the next tool that, this, that Mara has run is to calculate the pairwise trajectory like it has done before. Same thing, it's doing our trajectory files as its inputs, and also it's calculated what we wanted to do, which is to use the H1 atom in lysine 146, and also the O2 in mole 600. And it has given us this nice RMSD plot as well. So the last thing to do as Mara is to save all of these files. So I'm going to say to Mara, save this trajectory as a PDB file. And now what Mara is going to do is going to take all the information we've obtained so far. There we are, it's already been saved. And now we can access it. We can do this by going up to tables and files, clicking here and all of the files that we've used so far. So we've got a trajectory file, we've got all the RMSD plots and also our two original inputs are available for us to download. Now, this file that's now loading up is going to show us all of our different trajectories. So we have 110 different pauses and we can cycle through them here if we wanted to, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut to being into NanoMXR and we're going to show how you can then use the analysis in Mara in XR. So as you can see, our work with Mara over here in the web browser, and I've just loaded up into our entry list over here our trajectory file, our PBD. There we are. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my entry list. And over here at the top, I'm going to go to advanced menus and open this up. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to play the simulation. So I'm just going to come here and click forward play. As you can see, the molecular dynamic simulation we did in Mara is now happening in 3D in real time in front of us. What I can also do is if I move this over here and reset, I can also come to our ligand just here and show that by clicking the visibility tag. Now you can see our ligand in the binding pocket as well. And by doing the same process and clicking play at the same time, making sure they're both on medium speed, I can see how the ligand and the protein move together. So let me reposition that so you get a better look. You can see the ligand inside the binding pocket, make it a little bit bigger, moving. So let's continue on. Let's just pause these and reset them back to the original frame. There we are. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the surface of the binding pocket looks like. And I've done, I'm going to do that, but I've duplicated the binding pocket and I'm going to toggle its visibility. Now you can see all of the amino acid residues as ball and stick, which can, which can be quite useful. But what if we want to see them as a surface? So we do the same thing. We come to binding pocket. We come to display over here. And then I'm going to lock that in place. And I'm going to hide the ball and stick. Then I'm going to come to surface. Let me just move that out of the way so you can see. I'm going to come to surface. And I'm going to click show surface. And there you can see how the ligand fits into that binding pocket. If we wanted to, we can come to color. And I can select either, I can select the surface just up here. And I can choose to color a certain way. So let's go by scheme. 
And let's say we can do it by either the type of amino acid residue or element or hydrophobicity, which is a good way of visualizing it. And you can see how it sits inside the pocket now. We can also run this simulation again in real time, seeing how the pocket moves as well. By doing the same thing, we come over to our advanced menus. Just reposition it so you can see, and I can click, click play. And there you are, you can see how it updates in real time both the binding pocket, the surrounding protein, and the ligand. I can also hide the protein backbone and I can just visualize the ligand in the pocket, like so. Anyway. Just pause these and return them back to the first frame. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how in Mara, you might remember, we measured the distance between two specific atoms, the HZ1 in lysine 146 and also the O2 in this ligand mole. So I'm going to show you how to find these specific residues and atoms. We do this by coming to our entry list, we come to our trajectory file, and here we click hierarchy menus, that's this button on the end, and this window pops up. And now what I can do, I can select our chain, the one with most atoms, because it's our protein, and here I click open hierarchy. Now this is a complete list of all the amino acid residues in our protein. I'm going to go to medium grid, just so I can see the number, and I'm going to scroll down until I find 146 here. Now I've selected it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to display, atom, and choose ball and stick. Now if I bring that back into focus, you can see, just make it bigger, there we are. We have our lysine residue just here, and they're visible. So to measure this in real time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our measurement tool, and I can get that by either coming to modify, tools, and measure, and this will open up this on my right hand, or I can press the B button on my right hand, this will open up a scroll wheel for yourself, not for other people, and I can select measure and I get the same thing. I'm going to make sure I'm on distance and then I'm going to come inside the binding pocket, make it nice and big and I'm going to select the two atoms. So I can select this nitrogen and this oxygen. You can see the starting distance is 2.93 angstroms. There, that's a good view for it. And then if I run this simulation again, by going into our advanced menus, let me just slow it down. There we are. You can see how this distance changes in real time, just how it would in an analysis graph. And of course, you could go on to do further things, such as chemical interactions of your ligand around with the surrounding residues. Or do things like dockings. But that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mahar Onboarding. Goodbye.